Okay, I want to talk about this amazing free plugin by Waves that is called Studio Rack. Now, this plugin has been out for a couple of years now. And to be honest, I just recently started to pay attention to it. So I'm going to answer the following question. In your recent video, you explained how to use a sound ID and the NX Studio collection by Waves. Could you also explain how to set up Waves Studio Rack to include the various studios and other options available in Studio Rack? Yes, I can, and this is exactly what I'm going to show you today. We're going to look at uh, uh, Studio Rack, what this is all about, how I use it with the NX Studio Collection. Uh, and again, this is in reference to uh, the video I made uh, talking about the DNX Studio Collection, which is a series of plugins made to bring you into a studio space when mixing on headphones. If you want to take a look at this video, I'm going to leave the link down below. Okay, let's jump right in Cubase and check this out. Okay, on my control room, I have the Studio Rack Stereo, and that includes all instances of the NX Studio Collection plugins. So this way I have access within one plugin to all of those plugins, which can be very practical. And there's much more I can do with this, which I'm gonna show you after. So this is basically why I use a studio rack in my control room when mixing on headphones. So that might look a bit confusing as it is, but I'm gonna strip that down by opening an empty studio rack version. And this is what I get when I first open studio rack. It's very straightforward. It's actually acts like a channel, okay? So you have a bunch of uh, slots here where you can insert plugins, but only Waves plugins, the plugins you have access to on your side. They're all gonna be available right here, okay? By categories. Um, and this is how you insert them on those slots. So that's pretty cool because it's gonna allow you to add a bunch of plugins uh, within the same plugin. Okay, instead of adding them up straight on your channel. So that can be practical, especially if you work with Waves plugins, but you can do way more than that. This is the basic stuff, but let's go a step further and look at what we have with the parallel split. And then I'm, I'm gonna briefly show you the multiband split also, uh, which are two amazing features, which makes the Studio Rack like amazing to work with. And again, it's 100% free. Okay, so I'm gonna click on Parallel Split and that is gonna add uh, parallel channels, okay? The first one, I'm gonna leave it empty. This is gonna control the actual level and signal coming from that first slot. I can insert the Parallel Split on any slot that I have here straight from Studio Rack. And from that point, I can insert any type of uh, parallel processing like a delay, for example, uh, or compression for parallel compression, a reverb and uh, effects like that, you know? So that is an option I can do. And I can blend the dry and wet signal with the um, this channel's fader, which is, which is gonna act like an effects channel, basically. And from that point, I can add several other channels, you know, parallel channels. And again, within the same little slot here, okay? So that's what I'm saying. You can actually go very deep while working with this plugin. So let me go back. I'm just gonna remove these. And I'm gonna go back to my studio rack that I have on my control room to manage my NX Studio Collection. So I have my first plugin uh, inserted, which is Parallel Split. Uh, the first channel, I'm gonna leave it empty, and this is gonna allow me to monitor the uh, dry signal without any processing. Then on each parallel channel, I have one instance of the NX Studio Collection. The first one is Oceanway, second one is the CLA NX, the third one is Germano, and the fourth one is the original NX plugin. So if I wanna monitor the uh, audio through the Oceanway NX plugin, just to click on this one. If I want to do uh, the CLA one, I'm going to solo that parallel channel and I'm going to switch to this one. Same for the Germano and so on. Okay. So again, that allows me to work with all those plugins within the same plugin, which can be practical. 
And the cool thing is that you can even go a deep further. You can control some parameters uh, by using the macros that I have on the left. So for example, if I open the uh, NX Oceanway, Nashville, I have different studio monitors I can work with, but I can change those by using the macro because I assign that command to the macro number one by right-clicking and like for now, let me remove that macro. If I right click, I can add the macro to this command and select which macro I wanna assign that command to. So I'm gonna assign macro number one. So if I bring that one down or up, it's gonna change the monitors, the studio monitors I am actually monitoring with. And same for the CLA-NX with macro number two that is gonna go from one uh, set of monitors to the other, okay? There's three totals on this one. Uh, the Germano also has three different sets of monitors and I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna use a macro number three to go from one to the other. Uh, but on top of that, something I can do uh, is to use like, let's say I have a command that I, um, that I have on all of these uh, uh, plugins, which is ambience, which is gonna add some ambience or remove ambience out of the sound. Um, and I have that uh, uh, parameter on the uh, CLA-NX, uh, on the uh, Oceanway Nashville, and also on the Germano. And I can assign that one parameter to one macro and the same parameter from each plugin, which is quite cool. So this ambience parameter is assigned to the ambience macro, which is macro number four. And same uh, for the ambience of the, uh, the Oceanway plugin, same for the CLA plugin, using the same ambience macro. So that ambience macro controls the ambience of, of all of these plugins, okay, which is quite useful, okay? Uh, and same for the output level, okay? Same here with uh, a macro number five. And again, by clicking on solo, on a parallel channel, that will solo that signal only coming out of that channel without the original signal that I have on the first channel, okay? So this is how I'm able to use the NX collection plugins within Studio Rack, which makes it very, very easy to work with and very practical. Uh, okay, let me show you something else here that is actually pretty cool. And, uh, okay, I'm gonna go on the drum bus that I have here. And I have an instance of Studio Rack and I wanna show you the multiband split. I'm just gonna do this briefly just to give you an idea. It's not something that I have on this mix uh, per se, but I just added that up to uh, show as an example. Uh, so by adding the multiband, this is gonna create different channels for different band of frequencies, which is very, very nice. And I can go up to five band of frequencies. Uh, so I can add different types of processing on each bands. Uh, so on paper, I can create myself a multiband compressor by using the CLA-76 compressor. And that could be quite cool, actually. Um, or I can use an LA-2A for, you know, a certain band of frequencies, a CLA-76 uh, for another band of frequencies, some saturation on one uh, band of frequencies also, or set myself up and create myself a multiband saturation plugin, you know, with my favorite saturation waves plugins. Um, so, it, you know, the possibilities are endless. So what I did on my side, just to scratch the surface of what you can do here, is to add some saturation uh, on uh, the like this band of frequencies between 345 hertz to 700 hertz. And also a kind of a small delay slash reverb uh, for the mid-range frequencies on the drum bus. Let's have a quick listen to see how that sounds like. So if I add the one knob driver on the low mids, this is what I'm getting. I can add some more within the plugin itself and balance that out. And let's add a bit of ambience here by adding this CLA Epic, uh, which is a reverb and a delay under the same plugin. And that one I add between I added between 700 hertz and 2.8 kilohertz. If I bypass studio rack, I 
Okay, so that is an example of some very basic stuff I can do with the multiband split. And again, I can add a second multiband split if I want to. And then a parallel split if I want to even uh, go further, you know. Um, again, I never went to that point, but you know, it's possible if you want to. So this is the kind of stuff you can do with Studio Racks. Again, the possibilities are endless. There's a lot you can do if you want to be creative. Uh, you can create yourself your own type of plugin if you want to. Um, you know, and with all of your favorite Waves plugins. And this is what I did by using it with the Waves NX Studio Collection plugins. Now there's other features within this plugin that are quite amazing that I did not have the time to uh, experiment with yet. Uh, like for example, uh, the left and right knob, pan knob that I have here, if I click on W, I can narrow up the stereo image or wide up the image also, or just bring it the opposite way, you know, and bring the left side to the right and right to the left. Uh, which is also quite cool. So it has that Waves imager uh, under each parallel channel and same with the, uh, the multiband channels. So again, this is gonna add up to the possibilities you have with this type of plugin. So let me know in the comment section if you work with Waves plugins to begin with. And if so, let me know if you work with Studio Rack. Leave all comments and questions down below. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Until next time, take care and see you.